Peter de Paus from the European Environmental Bureau. We're here to Fondation Your Active event discussing smart water usage. Um, before I ask the questions, I'd like to, to put a couple of statistics your way, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, firstly, it's widely believed that just under 1% of all water is fresh water and available to humans, and that's used as well for agriculture and industry. But there's also statistics out from the uh, German Association for Water, Wastewater and Waste, mm -hmm. which believes that approximately 20% of the entire surface water in the EU is heavily polluted. What do you think the implications of this are? Well, <coughs> I think the implications, in a way, we know them. I mean, we have this pollution problem for a while. Um, I think what's really changed over the last decade with the Water Framework Directive is that our understanding of the, the real scale of the problem has become much better understood. It's a much more solid scientific approach. Uh, we have identified what we mean with good, clean water yep. through good ecological status, good chemical status. Uh, so we're taking a much more sophisticated approach to, the, to water management, to assessing how bad the pollution problem is and uh, look at causes, look at, <coughs> look at eno economics behind those causes and then start addressing them. Uh, so in a way, the Water Framing Directive has really raised the bar mm -hmm. in most countries. Uh, it's, it's worse than we thought. On the other hand, it does propose a lot of new instruments, tools, uh, which we have at our disposal to deal with it. Uh, to some extent, these are old issues like uh, nutrients, diffuse pollution from phosphate nutrients, where uh, the issue, I think I would really argue at this point, is, is political. Uh, we're not moving, making significant progress because of the politics behind it. <coughs> it's costly, you need to deal with a lot of farmers, uh, when it comes to chemicals, uh, I think the challenge is that a lot of the solutions are not in the immediate grasp of the water manager. They need to be addressed through chemical policy, reach chemical authorities, uh, pesticide regulations, industrial emission <coughs> regulations, where uh, there is a real challenge for a lot of water managers to, to reach out and to really integrate water management with all these other environmental policies. Sure. What, what, what is also, I think, really different than Neil now is that we really look at the ecology of water. We don't just see it as a chemical substance, H2O, which shouldn't have too many other chemical substances in there. We really see it as part of an ecosystem. And we look at rivers and lakes, uh, not just as the actual water, but we look at the whole, we look at the wetlands, floodplains, uh, the wildlife that's in there. And especially in this regard, this is a new area. This is something that has not been really addressed on any <coughs> on an EU policy level. And uh, there, um, the challenges are possibly even greater because there we need to really go into um, changes in the way we use our water for navigation, uh, for hydropower. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of obsolete infrastructures all over the place. And basically being an obstacle to actually achieving the sort of what, what we call under the Water Framework Directive uh, good hydromorphology. Okay. So to restore the, the, the physical character, the shape of the rivers. Um, okay. Now in terms of uh, EU <coughs> policy, <coughs> what can be done to improve these situations you're talking about? Lots of um, elements that aren't being used and that kind of thing. Okay, well, <coughs> I think in our view the river basin management plans are the main vehicle for putting the measures in place. Partly they're old measures, we've already been doing them, partly we've been preparing them. These are coming from the nitrates directive, urban wastewater treatments. Uh, so, and there, dealing with diffuse pollution from sewage, there still is a lot to be done. And significant investments will come from that. Sure. Um, but I think moving forwards, uh, we'll need to be looking at uh, obsolete infrastructures. We need to look much more critical at uh, new developments on rivers. And I think you can sort of see a trend that those parts of Europe where most of the developments, most of the modifications of rivers have taken place, there's sort of a rethink taking place. And people are starting to look at, okay, we could redo this different, we could do this differently. We start to restore. So you see river restoration projects taking place. Okay. When you go to other parts of Europe, like Romania, where the rivers are actually much more intact nowadays, the lower Danube, its tributaries, uh, it's exactly the opposite happening. So you see actually a lot of investment money going into further destroying these rivers. Um, <coughs> so, um, on the one hand, we need to start 
look doing this restoration more systematically, scaling it up where we have already done the damage, but also we need to be much more critical about the way we are developing our rivers in countries like Romania, places where these rivers are much more <coughs> intact still, uh, which for example means that we do need to face up to the fact that in many cases hydropower, further hydropower developments may not be a good idea, okay. even if purely from a client point of view you might want to do that. The fiscal reality is that there's just not that much space for it. Um, same with navigation, uh, we'll need to look at smaller boats, uh, rain-fed rivers especially, it's a major issue. Uh, we'll have less uh, water in our rivers, it'll be more uncertain. We don't know basically whether we can actually take the boat from A to B because we don't know how much water there's going to be. And this is going to increase this uncertainty. So the way we use rivers or transport, we'll need to rethink that. Um, so a lot of these sort of <coughs> bigger questions we really need to get into where we we would argue the water framing directive is sort of the, the entry point. This should sort of trigger it. Um, this is not to say that this is actually happening at the moment. Uh, our assessment of the plans is that uh, this is um, uh, well happening very slowly, very cautiously. Okay, Peter Tapaus, thank you very much. Okay.